All right, Shalom, Shalom. I want to start by giving all praise, honor, and glory to me, Father Yahweh, by Shem Hamashiach, by Shem Malachi Yahweh Shah. Raised Brother Yeremiah, WFI Cleveland. Coming back at you another lesson through the Spirit, Lord willing, this be edifying. Right, Shalom, be a quick lesson through the Spirit. Very right, quick lesson through the Spirit. Again, giving all praise, honor, and glory to your Heavenly Father, Yahweh, by Shem HaMashiach, Wa Malak Yahweh Shah. Shalom, Shalom, King, Shalom. Start by giving all praise, honor, and glory to your Father, Yahweh, by Shem Yahweh Shah. Brother Yeremiah from, the, from WFI Cleveland, coming back at you another lesson through the Spirit. Lord willing, it be edifying. And um, we'll just jump straight into it, no further ado. Uh, going to the um, what name, the Pharisee and the publican, right? So I'm gonna jump into it in Luke the 18th chapter, and um, start at the ninth verse. This is a uh, Luke chapter 18 and verse nine, and it reads, "And he spake this parable unto certain unto certain which trusted in themselves that they were righteous and despised others." Right. So Yahweh Shah was always speaking in parables. Right. Let's get that in Matthew 13. Right. Parables, dark sayings. Right, these are basically uh speaking in code. Right? So let's basically let's go to Matthew 13 and verse 10. This is Matthew chapter 13, verse 10, and it reads, And the disciples came and said unto him, Why speakest thou unto them in parables? He answered and said unto them, Because it is given unto you to know the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven, but to them it is not given. Right? So hey, the parables, Lord when the Lord speaks in uh in parables or Dark things is because it's only these are secrets that was only given to a certain elect men. Everybody can't understand these parables. You got dark, you got parables, dark sayings, and it's only for those that have ears to hear. It's not everybody don't got ears to hear. Right? Let's go to Ezekiel seventeen. Right? Everybody don't have ears to hear. This is Ezekiel. Sorry, not seventeen twelve. This is Ezekiel chapter twelve and verse one. And it reads, The word of the Lord also came unto me, saying, Son of man, thou dwellest in the midst of a rebellious house, which have eyes to see and see not. They have ears to hear and hear not, for they are a rebellious house. So you got people that got eyes. They, they physically see us, even when we're not on the streets, teaching on the highways and byways. But spiritually, it's like we're not even out there. They don't, they don't see us. They have ears to hear. We out there lifting up our voice like a trumpet, but they don't have ears to hear. They're not understanding the parables and the dark sayings and the mysteries that we're preaching unto them. Right, let's go to Proverbs 1 and 5. Right, this is the book of Proverbs, chapter 1 and verse 5. And it reads, A wise man will hear and will increase learning, and a man of understanding shall attain unto wise counsel. To understand a proverb and the interpretation, the words of the wise and their dark sayings. So you amongst the the men of the ancient men of ancient times, the men of wisdom and knowledge and understanding, when you're out in the gates among the elders, they spoke in a proverb, they spoke in dark sayings, they spoke in um what it says, uh, dark sayings and secret and cold. It's almost like when you're a when you're a parent and you talk, you know, you talk to your wife or if you're a woman, you talk to your husband and you kind of speak things in code. Right, so that the kids won't understand, cause the conversation too hot for them. So Yahweh Shah always spoke in parables, always, constantly speaking in parables. Right, let's go to Sirach chapter six. Let's go to Sirach six and thirty-five. This is Sirach chapter six, and verse thirty-five. It says, "Be willing to hear every godly discourse." And let not the parables of understanding escape thee. So when you hear these parables, you don't you want to hold on to these, hold on tight, right? You want to meditate on it. Let's go to that. So right, thirty nine and one. You want to meditate on these parables. You want to hold tight on these parables. Don't don't forget them, right? This is Sirach, chapter thirty nine, and verse one. Sirach chapter thirty nine and verse one, and it reads. But he that giveth his mind to the law of the Most High and is occupied in the meditation thereof will seek out the wisdom of all the ancients and be occupied in prophecies. He will keep the sayings of the renowned men and where subtle parables are, he will be there also. He will seek out the secrets of grave sentences 
and be conversant in dark parables. Right, so a man gonna be conversant in dark parables. He gonna be at this. It's like if we stood around some damn scientists. That conversation might be too hot for us. We might not be, you know, um, we may be ignorant to the topic or whatever they talking, whatever scientific um, language they speaking. Well, we can't even add to the conversation. But a wise man who's who meditate who meditate on the um, the wisdom of the ancients who uh, who always into parables. They can add on to that conversation. They can speak parables as well, right? They can understand and break down these parables. They meditate on the parables. Right, so we're going to go into some of these parables. Right, this is uh, Luke chapter 18 and verse 9. And it reads, And he spake this parable unto certain which trusted, it's like it, and he spake this parable unto certain which trusted in themselves, that they were righteous and despised others. Right, so this parable is unto to those that trust in themselves. They don't trust in the Lord. They believe they got their righteousness and they did it on their own. They trust in their own might, their own wisdom, their own knowledge. Right, you got men, it said the scriptures say that wisdom puffeth up. So you got men who get puffed up by wisdom, right? Who 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 think, you know, who more focus on we always talk about this, breaking down the scriptures, the deep mysteries, the book of Daniel, Revelations, uh, Ezekiel, all the prophets, the mysteries, the parables in the Bible, but then they being wicked, man. Right, let's go to Sarah 25 and 10. This is Sarah chapter 25 and verse 10. And it reads to write 25 and 10. Oh, how great is he that findeth wisdom. Yet is there none above him that feareth the Lord. So it's good to have these, uh, to have all this wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. Right? It's good to know all the deep breakdowns and the mysteries so you can, so you can edify the sheep. Right? So you can magnify the name of the Lord. Right? So you can uh, teach the people and make it plain upon tables unto them. But there's none greater than a man that feareth the Lord, man. That's the chief wisdom. Right, let's go to Sirach 19. In verse 24, Sirach 19 and 24. He that have small understanding and feareth Yahweh. So if you a man with only one talent, if you a man who just kind of into this thing and you only know Deuteronomy 28 and you know a couple of commandments and that's all you know. It says, he that have small understanding and feareth Yahweh is better than one that hath much wisdom and transgresseth the law of the Most High. So if you a man with all this understanding, but you a hypocrite behind closed doors, you being wicked, a man with small understanding is greater, greater than you. That's what the Lord said, man. Right, so let's go back to Luke 18. It's Luke 18 and verse 9. And he spake this parable unto certain which trusted in themselves, that they were righteous and despised others. So they looked down on their brethren. Right, verse 10. Two men went up into, two men went up into the temple to pray, and one a Pharisee and the other a publican. So you had a Pharisee, right, who believed that he was so righteous and so upright and kept the law perfectly and he done no wrong. And then you had this publican, right? Verse 11, the Pharisee stood and prayed thus with himself, Yahweh, I thank thee that I am not as other men, that I'm not as other men are, extortioners, unjust, adulterers, or even as this publican. So you got this, this Pharisee who puffed up in his pride, Right, and the Lord is gonna take all that pride down in these last days, right? It's like in these last days, if you've been, if you're a prideful man, right? If this whole kingdom in general that's that's puffed up with nothing but pride and haughtiness, if you are a haughty woman, hey, the Lord gonna bring you down, man. Right? Let's get that in Proverbs 16. Right, so you can't be prideful in these last days, man. This is Proverbs chapter 16 and verse 18. Right, you don't want to be like that uh, Pharisee. This Proverbs 16 and 18. It says, Pride goeth before destruction, and in haughty spirit before a fall. Right, so pride go right before destruction. When you puffed up with pride, when you got your when you got your head high and you walk with that stiff neck, a hey, Lord, that stretched out neck, the Lord say pride go before a fall, man. It say pride go before destruction and in haughty spirit before a fall. Right, so that's going to get you put to death, man. That's what the Lord is saying. That, that's going to get you put to death. Let's get another precept, Jeremiah 13. I believe it's verse 15. Like it. This is Jeremiah chapter 13 and verse 15. Come on, Jeremiah 13 and 15. Hear ye and give ear. Be not proud, for the Lord hath spoken. Give glory to the Lord your God before he cause darkness and before your feet stumble upon the dark mountains. And while ye look for light, 
he turned it into the shadow of death and make it gross darkness. So Lord, a hey, Lord said, look, be be not proud before all hell break loose, before you fall into darkness, before you fall into destruction, right before missiles land on the uh, fall on America, before famines happen on the earth, right? Be not proud, humble down before you know destruction come, man. Verse seventeen, but if ye will not hear it, my soul shall weep in secret places for your pride, and mine eyes shall weep sore and run down with tears because the Lord flock is carried away captive. So Jeremiah said, Look, I'm crying because my people are so proud, man. They don't even understand what's coming to them. They don't even understand how they about to go into captivity, they about to be destroyed. Right? Say unto the king and to the queen, humble yourselves. Sit down for your principality shall come down, even the crown of your glory. Hey, so he's telling you, look, humble yourself before this thing get real, too real for you, man. When you puffed up, man, you got to trust in the Lord. You got to trust and lean in on the Lord, man. Right? We nothing. Man is nothing but dust and ashes, man. You know what I'm saying? So our strength come from Yahweh. He's our power. He's our God. Right? Shalom. That's where our strength comes from. Let's go to Isaiah 13. Get another precept on that pride. This is Isaiah chapter 13 and verse 11. Isaiah chapter 13, verse 11. Right? And brothers got to examine themselves and check their spirit. This is Isaiah 13 and verse 11. And I will punish the world for their evil and the wicked for their iniquity. And I will cause the arrogancy. Hey, and that's what's happening with the Pharisee, man. He said, let me read that again, Luke 18. Luke 18 and verse 11. It said, the Pharisee stood and prayed thus with himself. First, he's standing on his feet when he prayed. He kind of standing tall, standing high, thinking he's standing mighty and he praying. It said, the Pharisee stood and prayed thus with himself. Yahweh, I thank thee that I am not as other men are, that I'm not as other men are, extortioners, unjust, adulterers, or even as this publican. He said, look, I'm, I'm happy. I'm so thankful that you ain't made me like none of these other wicked niggas out here, man. That you ain't made me like none of these other wicked Israelites, especially like this damn publican. He kind of being arrogant, looking down on him, man. Right? What the Lord said in Isaiah 13 and 11. And I will punish the world for their evil and the wicked for their iniquity. And I will cause the arrogancy of the proud to cease. And I will lay low the haughtiness of the terrible. So, you know, that's going to it, not just Esau, but our own people as well, man. Puffed up with that proud and that arrogancy, man. Thinking, looking down on their brother, think they're better than the next man. Hey, the Lord going to take you out the, la the land of the living, man. Let's go to a classic. This is Isaiah 2 and 11. Isaiah chapter 2 and verse 11. The lofty looks of man shall be humbled, and the haughtiness of man shall be bowed down, and the Lord alone shall be exalted in that day. Hey, so when the Lord come back, you prideful, you like I said, you're prideful Eve, you prideful them Jake, you arrogant, right? You puffed up in wisdom knowledge. You're going to learn the hard way that the Lord alone is going to be exalted in that day, man. The Lord only is going to be the one that's exalted. Nobody else. It ain't going to be nobody else in that day. It ain't going to be you and the Lord. It ain't going to be the Lord, the 12, David, the apostles, and then it's you. Because you're so mighty and you broke down and you woke everybody up in Israel. And you've been in the truth for 30, 40, 50 years or any of that, man. You know, matter how many, or you had the deepest breakdowns and you understood the whole book of Revelation. And you understood Daniel, the 11th chapter and, you know, his second address, 11 and 12 breakdown was off. But you had the right, the Lord don't give a damn, man. You got to humble down, man. You got to humble down these last days. Right, so let's go back and the brother pulling precepts. Let's put, a, we'll put Romans 2 and 26. All right, let's bring it out. All right, it's a beautiful thing when you see the brothers pulling precepts on the comment board. This is Romans chapter 2 and verse 26. And it reads, Therefore, if the uncircumcision keep the righteous of the law, shall not the uncircumcision be counted for circumcision? And shall not uncircumcision, which is by nature, if it fulfill the law, judge thee, who by the letter of circumcision does, does transgress the law. For he is not a Jew which is one outwardly, neither is, he, neither is that circumcision which is outward in the flesh. Right, so you got to be circumcised, like it's saying Jeremiah 4 and 4, Deuteronomy 10 and 16. You got to be circumcised in your heart. Right, you got to be circumcised in the spirit. Right, 
not it's not about you know always being uh physically circum physically circumcised. You being physically circumcised, they don't make you now a Jew. You know what I'm saying? The what really makes you a, a son of God is when you circumcise your heart, when you repent in this thing, man. Right? So let's go back to Luke 18. Very beautiful precepts. This is Luke chapter 18. Let's see where I believe I left off at verse 11. Luke chapter 18 and verse 11. It said, The Pharisee stood and prayed thus with himself, Yahweh, I thank thee that I am not as other men are, extortioners, unjust, adulterers, or even as this publican. I fast twice I fast twice in the week. I give tithes of all that I possess. So he kind of boasting of his works. He's saying, look, you know, I'm look, I'm doing it. I'm doing this all on my own. I'm the one that's being so I'm being righteous. I'm being righteous on my own. It's not the spirit that you that you gave me. It's because I just work hard and I study hard and I got this on my own, man. So it kind of let me get this Sirach 7. He's kind of boasting about himself. You don't want to have that boastful spirit on you. This is Sirach 7 and 5. Looking down on other men. You just think you're just so mighty. You know, good thing I'm here now. Now now, I, now we can really, now some real edification coming out. You know, I know they've been, I know uh, they was Instagram. I know they've been waiting for Jeremiah to go live because I really bring it out. That's, that's wicked as hell, man. That's wicked, man. You know? This camp wouldn't be nothing without me. I didn't. I really didn't uplift this camp, didn't I? Do you understand that? That'd be off, right? So let me get Sirach seven and five. This is Sirach chapter seven verse five. Justify not thyself before the Lord, and boast not of thy wisdom before the king. So you don't want to boast of your wisdom. You don't want to boast of your works. You don't want to boast of uh you know these type of things. You don't want to. It says. Justify not thyself before the Lord. You don't want to justify yourself before the Lord, man. That's what he's doing. He's justifying himself before the Lord, man. Boasting in his knowledge. Boasting in his works. Boasting in his wisdom, man. Right? Let's go back to uh, Luke 18. Verse 11. The Pharisee stood and prayed thus with himself. Yahweh, I thank thee that I am not as other men are. Extortioners, unjust, adulterers, or even as this publican. I fast twice in the week. I give tithes of all that I possess. And the publican standing afar off would not lift up so much as his eyes unto heaven. So the Pharisee is standing up when he prayed, but the publican would even lift his eyes up to heaven. He kind of on his knees, scraping his knees. He kind of got putting dust and ashes on his head, torn, you know, torn his shirt up, got his head, got his forehead on the damn floor. Hey, and he praising and he praising the Lord and he, he repenting and he praying, man. He coming humble and meek, understanding he's lowly, understanding he's nothing without the Lord, man. Right? Let me get this in uh, Joshua 5 and 14. Because you can't be stand up, standing up when you're praying. You're talking to the Lord like he's your damn friend. That's going off. Right? This is Joshua chapter 5 and verse 14. Joshua 5, 14 and he said, Nay, but as captain of the host of the Lord am I now come. And Joshua fell on his face to the earth and did worship and said unto him, What, say, what saith my Lord unto his servant? So Joshua, when he's praying, he fell on his face, man. When you read Genesis chapter 17 and verse 3, Abram, or Abraham rather, fell on his face and prayed unto the Lord, man. He wasn't standing up saying, Hey, Lord, it's me again. You know, I'm chilling. Then you, hey, you know, hey man, I just want to thank you for not making me wicked as hell. You know what I'm saying? You know, I'm, I'm the most righteous brother out here. You know what I'm saying? I, I did it all on my own. But you know, I just want to come to you and let you know, good looking, good looking, G. You kind of calling God, G. You know what I'm saying? You can't, you can't do that, man. Right. So let's go to uh, Matthew 26. I believe another precept. This is Matthew chapter 26 and verse 39, I believe. This is Matthew 26 and 39. And he went a little farther and fell on his face. Talking about Yahweh Shah. Right, Yahweh Shah prayed, he fell on his face, man. Right, just like the publican, being humble, being meek. It says, and he went a little farther and fell on his face and prayed, 
saying, O oh, my father, if it is possible, let this cup pass from me. Nevertheless, not as I will, but as thou wilt. So you want to be as this publican, man. You don't want to be puffed up and be uh, wicked in this truth, man. And the publican is deceiving himself because he believes that he is, you know, righteous and he, you know, he walking in truth, man. Right? So you got to take heed. This is uh, going back to Luke 18. Let me get this real quick first. This is Revelation 7 and 10. Because even the angels fell on their face. This is Revelation 7 and verse 10. And it reads, and, and cried with a loud voice, saying, Salvation to our power, which sitteth upon the throne and unto the Lamb. And all the angels stood around about the throne and about the elders and the four beasts and fell before the throne on their faces and worshiped Yahweh. Hey, so even the angels bow down and get on their face before the Lord, man. But here you got this publican puffed up in his pride, standing up, standing up bold and talking about, yeah, Lord, you know what I'm saying? Thank God I ain't like this wicked nigga. That's what he's saying, man. That's basically what he's saying. Good thing I ain't I heard so and so went off. Good thing I ain't like him. I still ain't been. I ain't went off all week. You know what I'm saying? I, I've been righteous. I've been fasting twice a week. I heard this nigga ain't fasted in, in three weeks. You know, so you don't want to you know have that spirit, man. He ain't fasted in three weeks. He's supposed to be in the truth. I'm really in the truth. That's how hey, that's how people are, man. This is uh, Luke 18. And it says, verse 13, And the publican standing afar off would not lift up as much, would not lift up so much as his eyes unto heaven, but smote upon his breast, saying, Yahweh, be merciful to me, a sinner. Hey, so look, look, I'm, look, I know, Lord, I'm nothing. I know I go off. Thank you, know, thank you, Yahweh Shah. I need you. I needed you to die. I, I appreciate, you know what I'm saying? I'm grateful that you died. I'm nothing without you. I need your grace and your mercy. I'm begging you, Lord. And he kind of smote in on his chest. I mean, he kind of beating himself up in this thing, man. He, he kind of, he probably, he probably was crying. Lord, you know, I need, he smote. That's what it means when they say he smote upon his chest. This is a humble man. When you smote upon your chest. Give me get Ezekiel 6. Y'all smote upon your chest in these last days. I mean, he kind of, in righteousness, he kind of hating himself. Now, he don't literally hate himself and he's, you know, contemplating uh, suicide. And he kind of hate himself and, you know, I'm thinking about, no, but he hate that he was wicked. He hate that he go off. You guys are the spirit you got to be in. You got to hate that I, that used to be in the world. Anything that you was in the world, you got to hate them. I hate that old man. You got to put off that old man and hate him, man. This is Ezekiel chapter 6 and verse 8. And it reads, yet will I leave a remnant, because the Lord is only coming back to save a remnant. All Israel will be saved, you know, eventually, the two thirds be born in kingdom. But that first go around, hey, on, the Lord coming back to save a small remnant. It says, yet will I leave a remnant that ye may have some that shall escape the sword among the nations, when ye shall be scattered throughout the countries. And they that escape of you shall remember me among the nations. So they that escape. We're going to remember the Lord among the nations. Us on this live, we, we have been remembering the Lord among the nations. We're scattered throughout the four corners of the earth. Now we're remembering the Lord. And they that escape of you shall remember me among the nations, whither they shall be carried captives, because I am broken with their whorish heart, which have departed from me, and with their eyes which go a whoring after their idols, and they shall loaf themselves. It say they shall loaf themselves. What it mean to loathe? It means to hate. That's when he's smoting on his chest. I mean, he loathes himself. It say they shall loathe themselves. This is the remnant. This is the elect. This is the one third. One hundred forty. The hundred forty-four thousand is gonna be that. Is gonna be that. Um, that publican that's smoting on his chest. That's getting. That's bowing their knees. Getting on their knees and putting their head to the earth, man, and begging the Lord for repentance. Begging the Lord. For, to to uh, save them from the land of their enemies, man. Begging the Lord to have mercy upon them. It said, And they shall loaf themselves for the evils which they have committed in all their abominations. So you're going to loaf yourself, man. Let me get this in Ezekiel 20. Right, similar account. This is Ezekiel chapter 20 and verse 43. Come. Ezekiel chapter 20. In verse 43, and it reads, And there shall ye rem 
And there shall you remember your ways and your doings. That's what the publican did. Remember his ways and his doings. Right? And there shall you remember your ways and your doings. Wherein ye have been defiled. And ye shall loaf yourself in your own sight. For all your evils that you have committed. Right? So for all the evils you should, be, you should that you have ever committed. And you should loaf yourself for that. You should hate that you backslid this, uh, you know, last week. You should hate that you went off. You know what I'm saying? You should hate that. That you, you know, you that you're still struggling with this with whatever sin that you're struggling with. You gotta you gotta hate that thing, man. You wanna say, look, I wanna be righteous. I wanna be perfect as I can, put my, my best behavior for the Lord, man. I wanna be on fire. You should loaf that damn I ain't study today. Or I didn't read, or I didn't read as much as I usually read. You should loaf yourself for these for them wicked ways, man. That was out in the world. That I was out in the world being a damn fornicator and adulterer or whatever type of wickedness, holding grudges, selling poison to your people, being a harlot, whatever type of wickedness you was in, you're going to loaf yourself, man. Satan trying to take with a word. Right? So you're going to loaf yourself. Let me read it again. This is uh, Ezekiel 20 and 43. And there shall you remember your ways and all your doings wherein ye have been defiled and ye shall loaf yourselves in your own sight. For all your evils that you have committed. So you got to loaf yourself, man. Let me get this in Luke 15. Write another parable. Let me see where I'm going to start it off at. Um, I'm going to start at verse uh, 8. I'm going to start at verse, eight, verse 18. I'm not going to read the whole parable. But this is Luke 15 and verse 18. About the prodigal son. Right, he went out. He he separated from the father. Went off, did all type of mischief in the world. Joined to a citizen of the, of the um a citizen of the country. They was doing riotous living, and now he's saying, "You know what? I need to come back to the heavenly father, Yahweh Bashi and Yahweh Shah." This is Luke fifteen and eighteen. And I will arise and go to my father, and will say unto him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before thee, and am no more worthy to be called thy son. Make me as one of thy hired servants. Right, so the prodigal son, and we represent the prodigal sons. When we come back to the father, say, look, I'm not even worthy to be called your son. That's a man that loathes himself. That's a man that, that hates the abomination that he's committed. And now he's hum humbling himself down and truly repenting and coming back to the Lord, seeking him wholeheartedly. It says, and I will arise and go to my father and will say unto him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before thee and am no more worthy to be called thy son. Make me as one of thy hired servants. And he arose and came to his father. But when he was yet a great way far off, his father saw him and had compassion and ran and fell on his on his neck and kissed him. Right. So Ella, the father loved us, man. We come back humbly to the heavenly father. Think knowing that, look, you know, I went off. I'm unworthy to be called thy son. You know, I'm nothing without you. I need you, Yahweh Bashan, Yahweh Shah. Your grace and your mercy and your promises and your love and compassion that you have showed the nation of Israel. And I can never, now I'll never go astray again, man. And I loathe myself forever departing from you, thinking I can do this on my own, being puffed up in pride. And, and puffed up in pride. Right? So let's go back to Luke 18. And we'll start at verse 13. This is Luke 18 and verse 13. And the publican standing afar off when, would not lift up so much as his eyes unto heaven, but smote upon his breast, saying, Yahweh, be merciful to me, a sinner. I tell you, this man went down to his house justified rather than the other. Hey, so the publican was justified, man. Right? The publican said, like, I'm, I'm nothing. I'm nothing, man. Who smoking him, smoking himself upon his chest, saying, "I'm nothing but a sinner," right? He said, "I tell you that this man went down to his house justified rather than the other. For every one that exalteth himself shall be abased, and he that humbleth himself shall be exalted." Right? So if you humble yourself, hey, then you will be exalted. If you too puffed up in pride, man, Lord, like we read in Proverbs sixteen and eighteen, the Lord gonna bring you down, man. Right? I'm gonna get another preset. Right, because we gotta have that same mind of Yahweh Shah. This is Philippians chapter two. Let me get two more precepts and close out. This is Philippians two and two, and it reads: Fulfill ye my joy that ye be like minded, having the same love, being of one accord, of one mind. Let nothing be done. So you gotta be like minded. 
Now we go on the highways and byways and we show people, you know, we teach people. We go to Revelation 1 and 13 through 15. We show people that Yahweh Shah had woolly hair and that he was, um, you know, a dark skinned man. We said, look, you look just like Yahweh Shah. Hey, it's, 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 it's a small thing. It's just a, it's one thing just to look like Yahweh Shah, but you got to be like minded as Yahweh Shah. The same mind that's in Yahweh Shah got to be the same mind that's in you. It's one thing to know, you know, you, it's cool and, and it's a beautiful thing to know. You know look, the Lord got skin of fine brass and I got skin of fine brass. He got woolly hair and I got woolly hair. But do you have the same mind that's in Yahweh Shah? Are you thinking like Yahweh Shah? Are you moving like Yahweh Shah? Are you a true follower of Hamashiach Yahweh Shah, man? Right? So this is Philippians 2 and 2. Fulfill ye my joy that ye be like-minded, having the same love, being of one accord, of one mind. Let nothing be done through strife or vainglory, but in lowliness of mind. Let each esteem other better than themselves. So the the public, I mean the Pharisee, he didn't esteem other better than himself. He looked down on the publican. That's what the Pharisee did. He looked down on the publican. He didn't esteem the publican. It says... But in lowliness of mind, let each esteem one better than themselves. Look not every man on his own thing, but every man also on the things of others. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Hamashiach Yahweh Shah. So that mind was in Yahweh Shah. That, that, that mind that's on the publican, his, that same mindset was in Yahweh Shah. Right? A lowliness of mind. A humble man. Right? A meek man. Right? Let's show Yahweh Shah. We gonna close out. This is a uh, yeah, I just want to pray past it. This is John chapter thirteen. I'm gonna start at verse three. John chapter thirteen and verse three. Yahweh shot knowing that the Father had given all things into His hand. So Yahweh shot not ignorant of this. He understand that the Father had given all things unto His hand. He understand that He's the King of Kings, Lord, Lord of Lords. Yahweh shot knowing that the father, but is he puffed up knowing that, is he puffed up knowing that he's the king of kings, lord of lords, knowing he can destroy the whole Roman empire right now, knowing he's the, the only begotten of the father? It says, the answer is no. So it says, Yahweh shot knowing that the father, John 13 and 3, Yahweh shot knowing that the father had given all things into his hands and that he was come from Yahweh. And went to Yahweh. He rises, he rises from supper, from supper, and laid aside, and laid aside his garments, and took a towel and girded himself. After that, he poured water into a basin and began to wash the disciples' feet and to wipe them with the towel wherewith he was he was girded. Hey, so Yahweh Shah was so humble, so meek, he washed the disciples' feet, man. We got to have that same mind being us that's in Yahweh Shah, man. And, he, and he's the son of God, man. He's the only begotten of the Father. Like I said, King of kings, Lord of lords, man. But that type of mind was in Yahweh Shah where he exalted others more than he do himself. Right? So let's go back to Luke 18 and close out. This is Luke chapter 18 and verse 13. It says, Luke 18, 13. And the publican standing afar off would not lift up so much as his eyes unto heaven, but smote upon his breast, saying, Yahweh, be merciful to me, a sinner. I tell you, this man went down to his house justified rather than the other. For every one that exalteth himself shall be abased, and he that humbleth himself shall be exalted. And with that, I'm say, call her law, Yahweh by Shema Shalom, like Yahweh Brother Jeremiah from WFI Cleveland. Lord willing, this was edifying. Shalom.